Hello and welcome to the recap of 90 Day Fiancé Happily Ever After The Tell All Part 2. This is going to be very brief because we're really only going to be talking about two couples since uh, three of them uh, we don't discuss because we don't even want to give them any of our energy <laughs> because they're so either ridiculous, disturbed, or pointless. Uh, and then Andre and Libby are not really in this other than to throw in a few unnecessary comments from their little Brady Bunch squares every now and then. Um, we can even go through Asuelo and Kalani quite quickly. Um, all we're going to do is we're going to rehash the fight again between, you know, Kalani and Tammy, when Kalani, Tammy, and Lesina, uh, Asuelu's mom, were out on the pier, the dock, wherever they were. And it got very ugly, and she said that uh, she, mom said she, he should just divorce you and leave the kids so that he can take care of his family. And of course, Tammy's famous, you know, that she's going to beat. Kalani up and of course uh, Colini is going to put in her 25 cents and of course Tammy's also going to threaten to beat Colini up which is very easy to do when you're uh, you know quite far away um, I feel like all of this is extraneous the opinions of um, the opinions of Colini and um, Kalani's mom, Lisa, while they, they are both lovely, again, extraneous. The opinions of Tammy and Lesina, extraneous, does not matter because the fact is Asuelu is not going to change. There's something fundamentally just vacant behind his eyes that he just has a very kind of straightforward, simple view of looking at life and that's that he does whatever feels good for him in that moment. And uh, Kalani does not love him. I don't understand why he came back from staying with his mom and sisters. Uh, this makes no sense. Um, it, it's not, this marriage is not possible. I don't know what else I have to say. It's not possible. There's no way it could work. The only way it could work would be if uh, Kalani had no self-esteem and was just a complete masochist. Uh, would just like I would just like to see Asuelu go back to Samoa, either go back to Samoa or go live with his mom and sister till he figures out what he wants to do when he grows up. Kalani needs to move forward with her life and think of her boys because she's not really going to get any help in that direction from uh, Asuelu. So she starts, she needs to start thinking of her future as a single mother, basically. Um, and just chalk it up to experience and you know crazy things happen on holiday <laughs> and you have two beautiful sons Oliver and Kennedy out of this relationship and that's the way you have to look at it um, but yeah just you know just file those divorce papers honey just file them it, stop wasting your time and torturing yourself okay um, by the way, Asuelu gets frustrated at the end of the tell-all and just leaves. He just leaves. He just goes walk about. That's what he does when things get tough. So file those, uh, file those divorce papers and don't expect anything from him. Just get rid of him. Legally unbind him to you and go on with your life and do not expect anything from him. It's not worth the fight. Okay. Um, all right, now, Tanya and Sinjin, let's rehash why these two should not be together. And you would think I'm not a fan of marriage, but I am. Uh, I've been married twice, and my first marriage technically did not succeed, but I got a lot of good things out of it, and I was with a person for 20 years, and went around the world and got a PhD, um, and had some fun times and some laughs. And now I've been married 16 years, so clearly I'm a fan of marriage. <laughs> clearly. Since I was 21, I've been single for one year. 
I wonder if that's bad. No, because I'm not like Darcy or Stacy. It just kind of happened. It, it just sort of happened. It's not like I you know, was planning for that to happen. Okay, uh, Sinjin is of course not thrilled to be back in Connecticut. It's cold. Um, he's working full time as a server. Um, they, they try to say, oh, I think it must be Tanya who says, oh, we had a, have a lot of love, but we also have a lot of issues. You do not have a lot of love. Yeah, I need to show you love. You need to see some other couples. Who around you can you look at to see what love is? <laughs> because you're not getting good examples if you think that you guys have a lot of love. You do not have a lot of love. Um, okay, the main source of, co of conflict, according to Sinjin, is miscommunication. You don't like each other. That causes you to <laughs> not to communicate well. <laughs> she can't stand each other. Uh, their view of the future is not aligned. Again, because you can't stand each other and you're wrong for each other. Um, we rehash South Africa, which just makes me once again want to actually buy a ticket back to Cape Town and mail it to St. John in Connecticut. I don't know what, where they are now, but um, you know, if I could go back in time to this moment, I would just mail them a ticket and say, this is not worth it. Go back, go back to your bra and go back to your family and your beautiful city and you'll be happier as a bartender there than you will in Connecticut with Tanya. Um, okay, of course the lockdown, no surprise. The lockdown has made things much worse between them. There's lots of fighting. There was already lots of fighting. Look, it's basically like this. If your marriage was not good before lockdown, you're probably going to be fighting even more and sick of the sight of each other in lockdown. If you were in love and enjoying each other's company, you will probably continue to be in love and enjoy each other's company. It is human nature to sometimes get sick of someone because even if you're in love and you've been married for a long time, you're not used to being together 24 seven. So yeah, you still have, are gonna have little things that happen, little flare ups, but in general, that's the way I've seen it. You know, couples that were already getting along are getting along and doing better in lockdown. People that were having problems are having big, are having really big problems in lockdown. Um, in the case of my husband and I, we weren't having problems before lockdown, but I have to say that whatever issues we did have um, have seemed sort of irrelevant because I'm just really appreciating how we are able to be together 24 seven without my wanting to jump out the window. I'm a very independent person. You know, I spend a good deal of the year traveling on my own around the world. And um, I have friends in other places and I love my husband so much, but it's always been my nature to have to go off on my own walkabouts. And I haven't had those. And yeah, sometimes I feel frustrated, but it's not him. I don't look at him and feel frustrated. I think, God, I wanna go back to India so bad I can't even stand it. Uh. <laughs> All right. Um, so yeah, they're saying now, um, Tanya and Sinjin are saying now their arguments are very mean and very toxic. They're talking about divorce. In the words of the brilliant Teresa Jadice, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. <sighs> Just do it. Um, she says all the arguments are about Sinjin drinking. I think Tanya's gaslighting him about the drinking. You know, um, it's not affecting his work. Uh, Tanya, now granted, there are people who are what are called functional or functioning alcoholics who hold down very complicated jobs. They could be doctors or lawyers and be complete alcoholics. So that doesn't necessarily mean that he's not, but he just, he is from a culture that there is a lot of drinking. Men in South Africa drink, it's a drinking culture. I don't think he drinks any more than the sort of average-ish man of his age, young man in uh, South Africa and even older men too. You don't watch any any uh, rugby match or anything like that in South Africa without everybody having a million beers. I mean, look, that's kind of in our culture in America too, um, but it's much stronger. The beer culture, the, the alcohol culture is much stronger in South Africa and Australia in New Zealand in parts of Canada, um, in England, in Scotland, in Wales, in Ireland, <laughs> lots of parts of the world. Um, also in uh, among the kind of like the white Africans in Zambia and Zimbabwe, they're also huge drinkers. 
Um, but I think that's partly to deal with the fact that life for white Zambians and Zimbabweans is not necessarily that easy. <laughs> They're extremely outnumbered by populations of people that their ancestors treated very, very badly. So I think there's always kind of a feeling of a little bit of a looking over your shoulder. Um, I know that when I spent some time with uh, some, some um, a group of white friends in uh, Zambia, there was a whole lot of, oh God, the way they drank, woo! They drank what's called cane and coke. Cane is like fire water made out of sugar cane. It's, yeah, it's basically just like pure alcohol. And they throw some Coca-Cola into it to claim that it's a cocktail, but basically the way they made them, it was just like a big glass of, to me it was like a big glass of uh, Everclear. <laughs> Tasted a little better. And uh, yeah, like two of those, and I was like, mm, you know, and uh, it's not good. And, you know, they lived they lived on the Zambezi River in Zambia. There are crocodiles and hippos in that river. It's not good to be not good to be really drunk in the bush in Africa, in my honest opinion. Okay, um, all right. So Tanya's just going to stick with this, and she's going to say, no, but all our all our worst fights are due to your drinking. It's all because of your drinking. Um, St. John's Bras, his friends, um, Andre St. James say, uh, no, he doesn't have a drinking problem, but uh, uh, come on, they're not going to say anything bad about him. And they're of that same culture and that same age. They probably all drink the same amount. Um, so that doesn't mean that he doesn't have a drinking problem. But anyway, again, his friends say it doesn't affect his job, which as we mentioned, is not necessarily a sure sign you're not an alcoholic, but just, I, he just... Again, having spent a lot of time in those big drinking cultures, and by the way, it's not just the guys. Some of the women in those cultures are big drinkers too. You know, I mean, geez, you should see some South African women put it away. So, um, and you know, uh, she brings up something saying, but it affected your ability to get a work permit. And that is because uh, sometimes when he went down, I thought he was, I don't know what kind of mine I thought he was in, but I didn't know he was in a coal mine. If you have to be a miner, probably the, the second worst type of mining you want to do is coal. And the bottom of the bottom of the bottom, God, you do not want to be a copper miner. Ooh, no, it was super toxic. Everything's, you know. So um, they would sometimes do shots before going down the mine. Oh, that doesn't sound like a good idea. Yeah, because it's a dangerous situation down there. But again, like a shot or a couple of shots, they're not going to be like hammered out of their mind and unable to work. But, you know, obviously the mines can't say, sure, guys, bring a bunch of booze down there and get drunk down the mine. No. Sorry, I say down the mine. That's a very kind of English, it's kind of like... Uh, Yorkshire um, or Welsh way of saying it, but yeah, they always say down the mine, down the mine, that's down the mine. Um, yeah, they're not gonna, they don't want to encourage drinking. Can you imagine the accidents? They already have so many accidents. Can you imagine if everyone's smashed? Because it's a miserable, unhappy, dangerous, dark, dirty, grungy, horrible job where you see your friends die. So the temptation would be if you can sneak booze down the mine, you might be tempted to do so. All right, so apparently he got caught. The boss, uh, I, I don't know, if, I guess the boss fired him. And so when someone uh, came, he, that was one of his references. And the boss said, well, I had to let him go because he was drinking on the job. Okay, maybe he shouldn't have given that as a reference. Maybe he should have stuck with all the various bars that he was a bouncer in, or perhaps another mine where he wasn't caught being drunk. That's bad judgment that's definitely bad judgment okay but anyway I, I do I will say though I mean having talked to people who's like you know fathers um, and, and grandparents were coal miners in Wales you know back in the old days worst job ever and I almost feel like it would have been compassionate every so often to give him like a shot of rum or something just to kind of I'm not saying keep him drunk but I don't know. It's like it's like an, it's something to kind of keep them from just being so terrorized all the time. These are just horrible jobs. I can't believe. 
I can't believe these men and how proud they were, like Welsh coal miners, how proud they were of their jobs and how strong they were in their unions. And, you know, they were like, I'm a man's man. I can go down the pit. I can, do, I can go down the, the, the mine and it's a beautiful thing. I can feed my family. And yeah, it's, um, it's quite amazing to me, <laughs> really amazing. And young boys, teenage boys going down there. Mm. Okay, uh, Sinjin says he will not give up drinking to save his marriage. Ooh. Well, that's just being honest. You know, he's being asked, do you think you could stop drinking in order to save this marriage and make Tanya happy? You know, he's like, for her? Hell no. <laughs> for someone who is my soulmate? who is wonderful, who is fun, and you know, who is really, I feel really close loving bond with, maybe, maybe, but for her, you know, he needs to be allowed compassionate shots to deal with Tanya too. Um, okay, and remember, the friends say Tanya's the problem. Okay, and of course, of course, of course, that's what your friends are gonna say. This close male bond, you know, bros before hoes. Of course, that's what they're going to say. But um, remember, Tanya and Sinjin did live with them for two months. It's not like they stayed for a few nights. They lived with um, they lived with Andres and James for two months, and so they saw a whole lot of Tanya bitching and bossing him around. I'm sure. Um, and then remember, these are, like I said, these are ride or die friends. They're going to support him no matter what. So I'm not sure if they're the best sources, but I totally believe that they would have seen her bitching at him and bossing him around because that's Tanya. Bitching and bossing. That's Tanya. That's her thing. That's her bag. Okay. Uh, Tanya still believes this is a match. Baby, no. No, baby. No. No, 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 no. No. You need to. Uh, Sinjin will give it another year max, which makes me sad because I think that they should just... Uh, Tanya's more open-ended. In other words, she's willing to sit and stick in this for what, years? He's not going to want to have a baby with you. Uh, uh, you're going to have to sneak it in or trick him, which, oh, I think that's the most disgusting thing. I hate that. I'm not usually 100% judgmental one way or another about everything, but boy, when it comes to women tricking guys, you know, and like pretending they're on birth control, and getting pregnant, ugh, ugh, when the guy's like, no, I do not want a baby, or I do not want a baby now, maybe not ever, it's not nice. Okay, um, yeah, honey, no, let him go, let him be free, uh, send him back, send him back find someone else, find someone who actually feels comfortable being bossed around, you know, by a woman uh, who is ready to have kids, who is going to just more go with the flow and not resist you. All right. Um, that is actually all we have because there's a whole lot of the other people that we're just not going to discuss. And it's just so ludicrous. And um, I'm hearing horrific rumors that I hope are just just that because there's always so much junk out there about some of the worst members of this cast the ones I don't talk about getting their own show and even maybe some of the ones that I do talk about getting their own show but I don't want to see a show about them they're really boy they're really trying to just pump out 90 day fiance related content constantly all year and have multiple shows going at once because that's TLC anyway um, thank you so much for joining me and um, please remember to like leave your comments you know I love hearing from you if you have not already done so you can do me a very great favor and you would honor me by pushing that red subscribe button and then ring the bell so you'll get notifications of my uploads um, I will see you very soon. Please take extra good care of yourself. Be good, but not too good. Bye. Love you guys.